Howdy folks, it's Angel the Hunting Gear Guy, and this is the Grey Birch LDR receiver and 16 inch carbon fiber barrel. And over here we have the RDR receiver and 12 inch barrel. These are both non-restricted 22 LR rifles here in Canada. They're uh, Ruger 1022 footprint and compatible with all the Ruger 1022 goodies. And I have these rifles uh, set up a little bit differently. One of them set up as a uh, maple seed rifle or as a long range 22 rifle. So I've got an, uh, an adjustable cheek piece on it. So I can go up and down depending on who's shooting it. They can adjust their cheek weld on it. Um, the rail has some MOA built into it. So it's got a little bit of uh, uh, cant to it. So you'll get a little bit of distance from that. And I also have the Burris Signature Z rings on there. I have them quite close together and I have minus 10 and plus 10 on the back. So what that has done is cant that scope even more. I'm like exaggerating here, but it's like pointing down that away uh, so that this barrel can aim a little bit higher. So I have this thing basically like right off zero. I, I have to go, I think 10 up from, from bottom on this thing, which means it leaves me lots of room to zip it up if I need to go out to 300 yards, for example, with 22 LR. A couple of the other things that I've done with this one. So it's, uh, uh, I've gone with the Magpul uh, X22 Hunter uh, stock. This stock is really nice in terms of uh, practicality. It's plastic, so you're not going to like really worry about dinging it up or anything like that. I really like the pistol grip on it. It's uh, It's got a very natural hold to it. And the forehand's got a little bit of uh, ribbing on there for your hand's pleasure to uh, to make it a little bit easier to grab. The other thing that I really like on it is that it's got M-lock slots. And what I like to do on mine is I like to use these little uh, pick rail and push button QD mounts uh, on these because I like to run all my slings with these push button QDs because they're super quick to get in there, nice and solid, and they offer some rotation in there. So uh, I like to do that. And then... On the back here, these Magpul Hunter stocks also come with uh, a spot for that, although you do need to buy the QD cup. So uh, you could do that, or you could just run it straight through this loop here. Again, I prefer the modularity of being able to have this sling on or off, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, so I've set it up that way. So that's the general setup on this one. I'll get down to some more details a little bit later. The other one I have here is the RDR, and I have it set up more as like a kid's rifle, something that they can shoot and kind of like plink away with. I've got a Vortex Viper uh, on the top there. Viper? Venom, sorry. I've got a Venom on the top there. Uh, I have a, an extended cheek piece on here. You can change out the cheek pieces on these Magpul X-22 Hunters. And this one, you can raise your head just a little bit or squish it down and it'll, you'll be a little bit low. So uh, you can't put all your weight on your head with this one. Uh, so you'd need to put a foam piece or something like that over top. I've also pulled out many of the shims on the stock. This is something you can do with the X-22s. You can take these shims and add more or less. And you can see that uh, when you compare it with my daily driver, you can see I've got quite a few more shims in that one. Uh, than I have in this one, which is like a minimum setup. What that does is give you a nice short length to pull, again, for the kids, so it's easy to use. Uh, nice short barrel. I really like how that looks. I really like how that like comes right to the end here. Uh, and then same idea with the uh, uh, with the sling swivels on this gun. Now, why don't we take these things to the range and do a little bit of plinking? <laughs> Here we've got the Grey Birch LDR. This one's got that rail built in. It's got that 20 MOA cant so that we've got a little bit more range out of the uh, out of the gun. A um, couple things I've added into it. One is a Delask bolt in here. We've got a Delask or kid charging handle. Uh, we've got the, uh, I think it's a Tactical Solutions uh, extended uh, magazine release here. And I've got the BX trigger kit in here as well. So uh, a nicer setup. If I wanted to spend like a lot more money, I would get a different trigger kit, something a little bit more uh, Gucci, but this is fine. Uh, and as you can see here, I've got this scope mounted uh, quite far forward. Uh, you'll notice that on most Ruger 1022s, you'll need to mount the scope quite far forward in order to get enough eye relief off the back here. So uh, just something to think about. And then I've got that 16 inch carbon fiber wrapped barrel uh, going up the front. And on the end here, what we have is a threaded muzzle cap. And uh, here's where you could choose to put on a brake or uh, 
really, if you were in the US, this is where you'd put on the suppressor. Uh, I am not in the US, I'm in Canada, so instead I just opt to run this because I don't really have any options that I'm really interested in. And you can see there that this barrel is basically inside a sleeve of carbon fiber. So this barrel isn't lighter than, than just the, the Ruger 16 inch, but it is quite a bit stiffer because it is again wrapped in fi uh, carbon fiber here. So stiffer barrel should give us better accuracy at the range compared with the standard Ruger barrel. Now the cool thing about this RDR is how low the red dot mount is. You can see that the, this is the top of the receiver here. We've got that uh, red dot mount in there, and then we've got this nice low profile red dot in here. So if you want a, a, a 22 rifle for close in or action steel or something like that, this is the ticket for getting a nice low mount red dot on there. Uh, I've chosen to go with, I can't remember which charging handle this was. It's, uh, it's on somewhere on my, uh, uh, article on uh, on building Ruger 1022s, and I've also got the extended Brownells magazine release because they had it on sale for <laughs> super duper cheap at one point. Uh, so that just makes it a little bit easier to drop the magazines. You can choose to use your thumb like that, or you can even use your index finger to push this guy down. Uh, more often than not, I just use my index finger to uh, to pop them down. Many of the other options I've chosen on here are similar. I've got a BX trigger pack in here. I've got the Delask uh, bolt in there and uh, the 12 inch carbon fiber barrel, which is uh, nice and light. And it makes this thing like crazy short and compact. And what are some of the nice things about shooting a, a gun like this? Well, this little guy is fun. It's just a ton of fun. I've got a, just that venom on there that uh, that's fantastic for. Um, if I'm gonna have kids shooting this one, you might worry that they can get their arm out in front of the barrel, but it's not really much of an issue. Most most kids will end up choking up on it or bring their hand back. And if I really need to, one other thing that I like to do is just throw a bipod on there. Just something like quick detach that, uh, that quickly pops on there. Uh, and then don't have to worry too much about them putting their hand in front now because they've got that bipod up there. Uh, alternatively, I guess I could put a foregrip up there if I was really worried, but I'm not. This distance is just too much for most kids to uh, to get around on and uh, isn't so much of a worry. That's one of those advantages of running one of these pick rail and QD mounts on your M-Lock. You can just get a little bit of extra fu functionality and extra flexibility uh, out of that fore end uh, there. And then again, I really like running those QD push button cups on the back rather than running the strap or running a, uh, your standard sling stud on the bottom. Uh, just gives a little bit more flexibility, a little bit easier to pull that sling off really quickly. I think the only thing I'm looking at changing on this rifle potentially is just the Cabela's Covenant 4. It's been fine for me, uh, but I'd like something with a little bit more glass clarity, a little bit, uh, just a little bit nicer. I've got the money to uh, to get a nicer scope, so I might as well, right? Uh, this is their 4 to 16, which I like. Their 6 to 24 is a little bit too much magnification for the the ability of the optics in it and it just gets a little bit kind of muddy and uh, and gross in there whereas the 4 to 16 is uh is more within its capabilities i think for the glass and uh is more fine but might as well get better a little bit better glass right uh and the clicks on this one they're kind of mushy they're not bad uh, you can get out of like forget where you're at in terms of how many turns you've got But the nice thing with how far how much can't I've got on this thing right now If I just zip this thing down until I'm zeroed and then or I'm bottomed out and I just zip it up to zero I'm done. I'm zeroed on this thing. So uh, as you can see there, it's uh, it's not too far That was 14 down to three. So I'm about 10 them away off of uh, off of dead bottom there, which is uh, just kind of nice it means I've got like 50 50 MOA up or, or so and then I've, I've still got the reticle to uh, to give me more holdover uh, for those really really long shots so uh, anyways cool rifles I've had them for a while and, and I've been shooting them a, a lot um, they've been working really well for me the bolt faces were the the cut off for the rim was just a little bit too sharp and I was uh, it was actually holding up on some rims so I had to just soften that edge on the uh, uh, on the bolt face to get them to run and uh, now they're running fine. So, and that that bolt isn't it was not the gray birch. But uh, anyways, I'm rambling too much. We're done. End it.
Thank you.